When you ask Laura Moser what she stands for, you get a well-worn litany of progressive policy goals. I believe in Medicare for all. I believe it's okay to talk about gun reform the day after a mass shooting. I believe that climate change is not a controversial topic. But Moser was already internet famous. In 2015, her then two-year-old threw a tantrum at the White House. The photo went viral. As a candidate, Moser's taking a big bet on a new kind of campaign, one that offers staffers something they're not used to, a shred of dignity. We still are working seven days a week. Um, we do get a morning a week off. It is a huge help for morale. It's a huge help for just not being like the level of exhausted that we usually are. So it's a six and a half day week. Yeah. You work. Yeah, yeah. With six your, and this, 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 this is a cushy campaign. Game. Right, yeah. yeah. The line on campaign work is that it has to suck. Some staffers this year are demanding it suck just a little less. This is one of 15 campaigns operating under a union contract negotiated by a new group called the Campaign Workers Guild. Salaried guild employees get a base pay of $3,000 a month. Hourly employees get $15 an hour. There's a healthcare stipend so staff can buy insurance and a promise to pay for gas and other reimbursements. All of you people here assembled who've worked so hard for this campaign know it's not easy. Campaign life doesn't have these guarantees built in. It's kind of lawless. And that's more than just a money problem. There's no sexual harassment training at all, and there's absolutely no procedure in place. So you just sort of wait, and you talk to some of your other women coworkers about it, and commiserate, and drink a few beers that night, and then go to work the next day. Harassment is a very real problem on campaigns. Hillary's campaign had allegations. So did Bernie's. There have even been allegations of candidates harassing their own campaign staff. Guild union contracts include an anonymous harassment reporting process. You know, like a real workplace. Why do campaign workers not have this stuff already? Because resources are so finite. Every dollar spent on something other than winning votes is a dollar wasted. So staff are asked to buy into a workplace that's more cult than corporate. To get the win, you must suffer. You're trying to make democracy better but you're working in a horrible dictatorship. <laughs> Can progressives have success if they change that model? Can progressives have success if they don't change that model? I'd say would be the better question. Times are changing. We're much more aware of, like with the Me Too movement, some of the things that have been going on in workplaces that just aren't acceptable anymore. I don't think that, especially now with this movement kind of taking off and more and more campaigns unionizing, I think that a campaign that's refusing to unionize I don't know how they're gonna succeed against candidates that are sort of like taking that extra step and making sure that they're practicing what they preach. The campaign manager told us she has had to move precious dollars around to cover the cost of union benefits. She called the amount trivial, but other campaigns wouldn't take this chance. More money for campaign staff means less money for campaign ads. Moser is okay with that. We've seen in multiple elections that the campaigns who spend the most on television, for example, often are not the ones who emerge victorious. And so I think having um, staffers who are invested in your campaign and who are being treated um, humanely, I don't see the risk there. And if, if you go down because you um, let people take sick days, then that's fine. That's a, that's a noble way to fall. <laughs> 